Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robert Fedoric. It is so good to have you here. Today I am continuing my Go With The Flow series and I'm going to give you an example of do in parallel flow logic. Now I've created a scenario here that's going to help us understand how and why to use the do in parallel. So the scenario is that an incident changes to P1 and when it does, I want to create an incident task for my special incident SWAT team. This is my elite level of IT, and they want to take a look at the P1 incident to see if it has a broader impact. Now, there's also a decision in this flow, because if the ticket is also for a VIP, we want to create an additional task for that SWAT team to manage VIP communications. So to summarize, if the incident is not for a VIP, it creates one incident task, after which, once that's done, it closes the incident. If it is a VIP, we have two simultaneous incident tasks running and the ticket can only close when both of them are closed. Okay, we want this to happen when an incident changes to P1. Now an incident can get created as a P1 and it can also get changed to a P1. So my trigger conditions are gonna be priority changes to one critical and our run trigger is gonna be special in this case. We only want it to run if it's not currently running. Okay, once we're done with the trigger, the first thing it's going to do is create a task. And this create task is gonna be an incident task. It's uh, associated to our trigger record. And a short description is investigate the trigger records number for a wider impact. And we are assigning that to the SWAT team. Okay, then we are going to do an evaluation if the caller is also a VIP. So in here, we have the trigger record caller VIP reference, if that's true, then we proceed to the create task within the if statement and this create task. Then we have a short description of need comms on the incident number for the VIP. And this is where I dot walk up to the VIP's name. And that is also going to go to the SWAT. So once those two tasks are done, then we are going to update the incident record. Some of you might be warning me that I'm already doing something wrong, but we're just gonna test it and see. So let's save this and let's run a test. Now, luckily I've already created an incident. It's also for a VIP, it's priority one. It's got no current incident tasks on it and it's in a state of new. And we will test with that incident. And we've got big problems here because it's gone all the way through the flow. So it's gone ahead and created the task. And then it's also gone ahead and created the VIP task, but it's also updated the main incident back to closed. So if I go to this incident, reload. So here I am back on the sample incident and we see that its state is resolved and it has two incident tasks that are open. Huge problem. We don't want this incident to close until both of those incidents are closed. So if you haven't watched my video on doing tasks in sequence, it's gonna be popping up in the top right-hand corner right about now. You may wanna give that a check out. For those of you who have already built sequential tasks, you'll know that you have this wait activity at the bottom of each task. So let's see what happens when we put the wait activity at the end of both our first create task and at the end of our conditional create task, the one that's hidden underneath the if. So I've got wait now on both those tasks. Now, before I've tested it, I've gone ahead and taken that incident. I put its state back to new and I've erased any incident tasks. So I'm gonna test the new flow with that incident again. Let's... This looks promising. It says that our first create task is waiting. However, we know this ticket is created for a VIP. So it should have two incident tasks, but this only has one. So let's go back to our flow results and see what might be the problem. Well, remember that in flow action one, we were flagged to wait. That means anything after this action must wait. And unfortunately for that, that means the if statement is waiting. So if I go back to this incident and I then move the state to close complete on the incident task, we'll see that we now have a second incident task that has been open. Unfortunately, it's too late. Remember, I want my process to have both those incident tasks open if the second one is needed. So we already know this flow isn't working. We'll go back to our uh, example flow here. We're gonna refresh it. We see that that first task got completed. Now it's going into the second ta task and now it's waiting. But unfortunately, that's just not what we want. Okay, so we have a bit of a conundrum here. One always has to fire and two is sometimes gonna fire. But if I use wait conditions on both, Number two is necessarily always going to wait until number one is done. So what we wish we could do is say, do number one and then also do number two 
even if it's, if it's conditional. It's almost like put the conditions in a separate stream of the flow. And for that type of activity, we want to have the flow logic do the following in parallel. So I move my do the following in parallel onto my flow. I'm going to move it up to the top. I'm going to take my create task, which is the one I always want to do. I'm going to put that under the do flow in parallel. Then I'm going to take my if statement along with everything underneath it. And I'm going to move that to the node just below. So now I have two things running in parallel. I have the create task and I also have my if. Both of these tasks also still have the wait condition on them. So what we hope to happen is that each of these streams run in parallel to each other and therefore they'll both get created if necessary and both will wait and they're not dependent on each other. So I've got my incident set up, state is new, no incident tasks, let's test our flow. This looks very, very promising. Here we have the create task. It's been launched and it's waiting. We've also evaluated the VIP is true and it has also launched a task and it is waiting. If we take a look at our test incident, the state is still new and we have two incident tasks. Both are open. Let's see what happens when we close one of them. We move that to close complete. We go back to our flow, we refresh and we see that this if component has completed. However, it has not done the update record because it is still waiting for this task in the parallel flow to complete. So we go back to our incident. We take that open incident task. We move it to close complete. We go back to our flow. We refresh. It's now updated the record. It is now complete. We go back to our test record and we see that it is in the state resolved which means our flow has gone successfully. So there you have it folks, a very simple example of when you might use do in parallel. Hope you got some wisdom out of this one and I will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow resource looking for your next big move, reach out for coaching, resume, LinkedIn review services, or ServiceNow training. And if you're a ServiceNow customer, I offer consulting services as well as recruiting out of my 15 year old ServiceNow network. Reach out via the email shown here. Thanks for watching.